congregation that need to be the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Just greet the person next to you and say, Welcome to the house of God. <laughs> Just tell them it's um, Women's Month. Women's <laughs> Let me just start by saying slowly but surely those days they are here. Then I know you've got a person now you're saying which days now. Days whereby the woman is no longer an underdog, but is now the top dog. I know in your mind you are now saying, which days now? Those days where the woman should no longer be viewed among the underprivileged persons in society. Those days where the woman is slowly but surely rising and taking up their position. These are the days that we are now living in. It's the reason why I'm happy I have a woman bishop Reverend Charmaine Morgan. Not only that, yesterday in South Africa day, another piece of history was rewritten. A presiding woman bishop will be taking office from 2024. Those are the women that I'm talking about. Go down memory, memory lane. You have heard of Rosa Parks standing for her rights in America Day. Go down memory lane. Just nearby in Liberia, Serif Ellen Johnson, first president, a woman in Africa. Not only that, just down south, we all know of Winnie Mandela, Madikizela Mandela, an anti-apartheid activist. Coming closer to home, there she is in the Justice Ministry, Yuvon Dausa, our own Prime Minister, Sarah Kungola Madila, and very soon, I don't know what will happen, it's not a prophecy. Don't be surprised. Come the next elections, this country having a woman president. Slowly but surely, the woman has been taking the place. Patriarchy, marriage, religion, there have been some of the things that have been shaking the woman. But like I said, slowly but surely, no longer a mighty man of Allah, but a mighty woman of Allah. She's rising, she's taking a place. May all the women in this church continue to rise. May you continue to take your place this is my story, this is my song, as the song is said, nothing should detain you. Amen. Amen. There are only ten verses that we have read. The book is Exodus. What I like about the ten verses that we have read there is no mention of God, nothing whatsoever. Did, did you hear any mention of God in those 10 verses? Read that again. There is no mention of 
word God there. But it does not mean he is not there. It does not mean, let me say he is an invisible God. He is there in those ten places. Mentioned never. When you look at those ten verses again, there are no names which have been mentioned. Then a certain name and a certain woman. There is the Pharaoh's daughter. They are the maid servants. There is a sister there. But their names are not mentioned. It is only when you read Exodus chapter 6 that's when you will come across the names of the men and the women. And as Christians, we all know the men, Amram, Jochebed. The child in that story is Moses. The sister is Miriam. Pharaoh's daughter is there, they made servants. Most interesting is the fact that it is dominated by women. Can I hear an amen from the women there? Amen. When you read verse 1, you can just project to verse 1. Now Amram from the family of Levi married a Levite woman who was called Jochebed. You see, I'm not talking about marriage, but like I said, it's one of the things that has been stifling woman advancement. But the picture that we get today is the true picture or the proper picture regarding a marriage. Now I'm talking to my women folk who are not yet married. There is the, the answer there. There is where you should copy a man from the tribe of Levi who was delivered. The priestly tribe when they got a woman again from the same tribe the Bible talks about unequal yoking. Do not be unequally yoked. So I would expect a Christian being married to a Christian there. Child of God, knowing where they are going to select their future husband or their future wife, there is a true example from the word of God. They were married, they had a child. It is unfortunate the child was born at a very wrong time. But it was God's time. That was the best time for the child to be born. This was the time when Pharaoh was busy killing all the male Hebrew children. He had sent out a command, a decree. All the boys, they are supposed to die. One thing that I like about this story, there is a woman there, Chocobeth, a woman of vision, a woman of determination, a woman who said, despite these circumstances, not my child, not my Moses, not my child will die. She was a visionary. To those who were here in this service last week, I remember Bishop talking about four things. Calling, if you still remember. Confidence, if you still remember. Courage, as well as perseverance. And let me add on and say, the fifth one, it's a woman of vision. A visionary woman as exemplified by Moses' mother. 
As a woman, you need to have a vision for your own life, a vision for your own family, a vision for your nation, a vision for the whole of humanity at large. This is where women like Mother Teresa comes in. They did not look only at themselves globally. Typical example of a woman there. Be a visionary. Moses' mother was determined, I'm not going to let my child die. She was determined. At times it calls for determination in one's life, whether you're a woman, whether you're a man. Ten attributes, a characteristic which you must have as a child of God. Chocolate Bird is actually showing us that my child is not going to die. And the next thing they came up with a plan. Remember, it says, in as much as there is no mention of God in those ten verses, but everything in that story speaks about God being in the background, making things happen. Whether it's women, whether you're a feminist, I don't know to which dimension you might belong, radical feminist, whether you, 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 you are a womanist, we still need God. I know those things in my life. To God be the glory. Interesting is the fact that here is the daughter of a king, Pharaoh. I don't know whether the church had run out in the palace to such an extent that she had to go down to the river Nile to take a bath. I don't know what had happened in the palace. It is unheard of. It's unthinkable. The hand of God at work, invisible, it could not be seen. All of a sudden, she's going to the Nile River to buy. Brings along a maid servants. While she's taking a bath there, that's when one of the maid servants spotted the basket. For your own information, that basket should remind us of that great story in the book of Genesis. Noah's ark floating in the river. And here is baby Moses, the mother, through God's divine intervention. That's when that basket was made, tar placed on it, and then it was placed in the reeds there. Interesting is the fact that. The same river where Pharaoh had decreed all the babies should be killed for baby Moses, it was actually his bed he was resting in there. The waves rocking him in there. Yet it was killing other children in there. If you ever wonder there's a woman, There are women like yourself, or even better, they lost their jobs during COVID-19, they lost their lives during COVID-19, they are not even schooled the way you are schooled, but God's grace, God's hand, is upon your life. Have you ever wondered about those things? At times when I miss them, thinking it is because of my knowledge, my intelligence, but like I've mentioned, this is the grace of God. 
So Pharaoh's daughter passes by. This is where Miriam, Moses' sister, comes onto the scene. All along she had been watching from a distance. Remember that familiar song? From a distance. From a distance. That's God for you. From a distance. He's watching all your footsteps. Watching all your movements. When you think, I can go it alone. That's when he will tell you, my child, you can't. Ask Moses' mother. For three months, she could hide the baby. But then, then came a time when it was no longer possible for the mother to hide the baby. That's when God now steps in. And like I mentioned in the whole story there, it's God at work. Saving the life of the one and only deliverer of Israel. A very interesting story I must mention, especially when you are a woman. What I like is the collaboration, the working together of the women in the story. The mother is coming up with an intelligent plan. The daughter is the, it's not a watchman because she, she was a woman. Stay away like a watchwoman. Or we can create our own, don't worry, it's women's man. So there is Miriam also playing a role. There is Pharaoh's daughter also coming onto the scene. And all these combined efforts from the women were integral in making sure that baby Moses survived. Only last week I was talking to one of uh, our lady workmates. And she was saying, you know, sir, the problem is us as women, we have got that pull her down syndrome, especially to another woman. I am not a woman, I get it from a woman. <laughs> I don't know how far true it is that at times women, instead of supporting one another, they pull themselves down. But here is a typical lesson from the story. Combined effort is the answer. Whether in the house of the Lord, whether in your own family, whether at your workplace, it's all about combined effort. And as I finish, it is the last verse which I want, verse 10. Just project for me verse 10. When the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and she became the son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. For me, that is where the whole miracle of the story is. It's not in the mother coming up with a plan, making the basket, placing him in the river there. For me, it is the drawing of Moses out of the water, and hence the name Moses. I can just imagine, like I mentioned, slowly but surely, the woman was in some sort of a deep river, a deep hole. But along came a man called Jesus Christ, who is drawing you slowly but surely out of the water. You no longer deserve that underdog tech. 
We are now a top top. We are no longer a vulnerable member of society. In as much lots of things are being perpetrated against you, believe in yourself. Have that confidence which Bishop talked about. Be brave, self-determined. Then you will achieve your goal. I drew him out of the water. Does it jostle something into your mind? Ask Joseph. He was drawn out from the pit. Ask our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Drawn out from the grave. Here is Moses way before being drawn out of the water. Mighty women of Allah, that time has come where we are not supposed to be in the river, but we have been drawn or pulled out. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.